This video starts outdoors because I've got a really big fuse here and, oh, hold on, I've got a cat here as well. What are you doing, China? <laughs> All right, okay, China is doing what China does. <laughs> Don't, what? Cat? Anyway, the fuse. So this was sent to me by Chris and he works in a sort of a company that makes substations and control equipment. And this is one of a, uh, a set of three fuses that was in a solar farm where they have a lot of solar panels. And in the UK, I've always been a bit sceptical about, you know, the, the amount of solar power we have. But in this case, last year, we had so much solar power that it kind of overheated one of the substations and it uh, also caused the transformer to split. And then one of the fuses let rip with quite a big bang. What are you doing? Anyway, I digress. The reason I've got this outdoors initially is because it's actually cracked. I don't know if it was cracked when it was shipped or it's just got uh, had a rough trip, but it is full of silica sand, as these things are. So I do have a x-ray device, not my usual x-ray device, it's a cheapo x-ray device. I don't know where my other one's gone. And I'm going to crack this and I'm going to tip all the sand out. And then once we've got into it, then we can go indoors and we can take a look inside it. My apologies if the sound is a bit weird. There's a microphone on my forehead here and I just didn't realise how much I tend to like make my brow go up and down and uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of, I hope it's not creating lots of noise. But I'm going into the fuse now. Oh, lots of ceramic. Watch yourself, kitty. Okay, what I'm seeing already is the charge remains of the fuse. So I'm going to tip all the sand out here. So the way these fuses work, because they're designed to break quite high potential fault currents, they tend to have a filling of silica. And that silica sand, when the fuse actually blows, it goes in and actually fills where it, it, the void was that was created by the fuse wire. It also, in the case of this one, ugh, it makes this spring-loaded plunger pop out. And the reason it does that is because it's in a bank of three fuses. And if one fails, you actually want all the fuses to cut off. You don't want two phases left on. So whichever fuse fails first, and it could be thermal or it could be electrical, whatever fuse fails first, when this pin comes out, it hits a mechanism at the end and it kicks the circuit open. I think you can see that in one of Rodalco video, Rodalco's videos. Not sure. I'd have to look that up. Rodalco is based in New Zealand. He does sort of electrical distribution type videos. So now I've tipped this out. I can, what I can see inside, actually. I'm being careful here because this is quite sharp ceramic. I'll just open it a bit more. That's it. Open a bit more. Yeah. What I'm seeing in here is... The fuse wire is wrapped spirally around it. And you can see where it's been heating up. You can see where it's ruptured for a start. Well, tell you what, let's go to the bench and take a look at this. That's a better idea, isn't it? We'll go to the bench right now. Back at the bench, and having listened to that footage, I have to say, uh, sorry, it was a bit boomy. I didn't realise how, how good that microphone was going to pick the sound up. It was actually a wee bit too much. So what we have here is actually two different layers. We've got an outer ceramic core and then an inner ceramic core, both with the fuse wire wound around them. I'm guessing from the way they were arranged that both of them were effectively in parallel. I wonder why they do that. Strange. Um, the fuse has blown. It's fused into the silica sand. You can actually see, if I snap a bit of this off, if I can snap a bit of it off, there we go, where the fuse is actually detonated and sort of the sort of plasma started forming, the sand has flowed in and it's fused together into a sort of non-conductive, brittle, glass-type substance. That's the magic of how it actually breaks the current. And this fuse was rated at, well, it doesn't sound that much, 63 amps, but it is rated for 20, 20 stroke 36 kV. That will be the 20... Uh, KV will be the voltage with reference to ground, probably, and the 36 will be the voltage between phases. And it's designed to break uh, 40,000 amps. And interestingly, it had a reference in the label to the striker as being medium. I wonder if that's to do with the spring-loaded strength of the striker plunger. Don't know. But the centre of this uh, core is hollow down the middle. 
I'm trying to work out what actually made that plunger come out. It does say it's got thermal protection. It says, temperature begins end. Temperature limiting. And I guess that means that if it gets too hot, this plunger will come out. And also, if it's blowing, it comes out. The only way I can really think that might have happened is, did they have an auxiliary wire going down to the bottom that held this in place? That when all the others had blown, that wire would blow and that would release the pin? Or is there some other mechanism? I think I may have to go into this and explore this further. You can see at the end here, you've got the outer shell that went onto the top of the other end of this, like this shell with, with its connection tabs. And you've got that inner shell as well that went onto the, that's the equivalent of this one on the end of the inner ceramic core. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the Dremel. I'm going to try and get the end off this and see if there's any sign that there was some uh, solder or something, a sort of, I guess, low melting point solder or something that would actually release that or some other device for actually triggering it, maybe an indication that it's had a bit of a bang inside to actually make it far. So I'm going to pause momentarily while I do that. A little attempt at closer zooming by just sitting it up on an object. Here's what I found inside when I dremeled the end off. So here's the cap that I dremeled off the end, and the pin has now gone inside, but there's the spring that went into it. And the spring was held in place by this what looks like fuse wire, which it probably is. And that fuse wire was threaded down the middle of the spring, and then this basically pulled the spring down. So the pressure on that was just purely pulling the spring down. I'm guessing that maybe the plunger itself would have slid in and out. Um, oh no, it actually probably punches through this sort of cover, I'm guessing, this sort of label here. But um, that appears to be what holds that in. I'm going to go back down onto the lower level here and zoom back out a little bit. So... I'm not really seeing what that wire connected to inside. I can see a wee skid mark on the side of this. Um, but I'm not seeing what it physically attached to other than that. So if you've got any ideas what uh, what actually triggers that, did, the fu did those fuse wires perhaps travel down the inside of this core? I mean, I can see they are... They're showing signs of heat. There's that sort of discoloration of the metal. So it has kind of overheated and blown. Does, was it maybe bonded on with a, a thermal, thermally sensitive soda that just would melt and let rip if the temperature got too high? I'm not sure. I'm looking at this core down the middle and it does make me wonder, was there a wire going, or a cluster of wires going down to the other end of this fuse and maybe tacked over the other end? And uh, not seeing anything, though. Strange. And they might have been, you know, a mechanism whereby if the main fuse is blue, then this one would definitely blow because it's very thin and that would release the pin. But uh, not seeing anything. I don't like saying, yeah, that's probably how it worked and not 100% know here. So I don't know what caused that. And I do also don't know why they've got this sort of... Uh, Silicone goo, is that a clue to it? Was that originally folded over the sides and tacked on? And maybe this is temperature sensitive and that was the bit that lets go. And also, but then I don't see how um, the current path would be between here to actually blow that as fuse wire inside if it blew. Don't know. It's strange. I can only guess maybe it was tacked onto the side of these, but that is purely a guess. But that is uh, the inside of one of these fuses. Uh, the most interesting bit is the fact that the fuse wire is, the, is a ribbon is wound round the outside of this. I wonder if it's a... Uh, there's one coming off. There's two coming off. Ah, you know, there's another thing. It's not just one wire. It looks like it's three that are all co-wound round. It's sort of helix round. It's spiralled in between each other. That's to sort of spread the uh, current load across the sort of... I suppose it lets them use one standard ribbon, metal ribbon, for lots of different current ratings just by multiplying it by X number of times. In this case, uh, how many would have been for this one then? Just one for the middle core. Maybe that's also just to allow an extra... But then its resistance would be different. Yeah, I'm not sure. Unless they actually make up for that with the closeness of the space. I'm not really sure about that. I don't know why they've got a middle one uh, in conjunction with this one, unless this is part of the mechanism, the middle one is actually part of the auxiliary system that does release that pin, 
which it's possible that it is. And it's basically designed to blow and then release at the end. But uh, interesting. So I'd like to thank uh, Chris for sending this fuse in. It was quite interesting to take it apart. As you can see from the sticky plaster, the ceramic is quite sharp. On a bendy bit as well, that's annoying. But there we go. That is the inside of one of those fuses.